Hello to you dwellers and welcome. I'm the Arcadian and this is Mabinogidio. Today's deck showcases some of my favorite cards from the recent Blaze Blue collaboration event. Now, none of these cards, uh, unusually for a collaboration event, are, oh my goodness, how incredibly overpowered, ah, you know, Skathach and Zagi levels of what the hell. Nevertheless, they are still quite strong and work very well when put into correct decks. Now, over the weekend, I kind of ruined my throat. I don't know if you can hear that. So we'll only be doing one fight today, but hopefully it'll be a good one. Fingers crossed. All right, let's jump into the deck and see how it's built. First of all, you can see at a glance that we are using three of the Blaze Blue collaboration cards. Now, I have a, another couple that I'm really enjoying using, but these are the three that I find just fit best into most of the decks I'm creating right now. Your mileage may vary, of course. It's up to you. So, to start at the beginning, first of all, we have the Book of Knowledge. Mana version, which basically makes it free at level 1. This is to ramp us up to level 2 as quickly as we possibly can, because you only start dropping the Blaze Blue cards at level 2 or above. So level 2 for number 13, level 3 for Nirvana, and then Tsubaki can be dropped at either of those two levels. But don't drop any of them at level 1, they will be removed far too easily. Next up, we have Elf. This guy's just here to act as early game defense, just in case we need it against some of the aggro decks. It can be very, very useful. Next is Hidden Spider. Our opponent is going to be trying to get rid of our Blaze Blue cards by using spells rather than creatures for the most part. So Hidden Spider allows us to, uh, to trade the creatures, basically. Next up, we have Goblin Bomb Squad, again, here for defensive purposes. Very useful if your opponent starts bringing out things before you can start bringing out your own Blaze Blue cards. Next, we have the Magic Sensing Bomb Plus One. Always go for the Plus One variants of this guy. It does a lot of damage at level four. Uh, here, again, to help us mop up at the end. If our opponent has 10 or less HP at level three, <coughs> pardon me, uh, then we can drop this bomb, drop a couple of our Blaze Blue cards, and then our opponent's kind of out of luck. Either he just lets all of the special effects go off, or he tries to remove it with the spell and ends up killing himself. Okay, next we have Nirvana. Difficult card to keep alive, but placed in front of a creature with a good HP value, and even if she's removed via a spell, her special ability activating should kill whatever she's in front of. And if your opponent doesn't use a removal spell on her, then she can cause absolute havoc with the enemy lines with her constant AoE effect attack. Very useful. And very cheap, of course. Next up, we have Hunt. Low-cost removal card, of course. Always have those in there. Next is Tsubaki. Very useful in particular situations. You won't bring her out all the time for this particular deck. But in certain situations, as I say, she can put a lot of pressure onto your opponent. And we go away. Thank you. She didn't want to leave. <laughs> Next up, Flame Emission, AoE Gold Attack, very useful to have. Always carry at least one AoE in your deck. And then V number 13, probably the best of the Blaze Blue cards uh, in general, uh, and definitely the best one in this deck. The ability to summon two creatures, one of which is a pretty high attack value minion, which has all these extra effects on top, very, very powerful. Very powerful. So your opponent has to deal with both her and the sword that she summons, otherwise they're in a lot of trouble. Next we have Icy Ice Spear, not Icy Spear, it's a different thing. <laughs> Next we have Ice Spear, another AoE removal, this one uh, for slightly different reasons than the Flame Emission. Good to have them both in here, the Flame Emission is really for HP wipeout removal, the Ice Spear is for HP uh, damage, but also to lower attack values on enemies if it turns out to be necessary. And then finally, we have Captured. This is just to deal with any of the super large creatures that may come our way, the Jurgens, the Doom Machines, the Ultimate Summons and this sort of thing, as well as just to pull something out of the way of any fatal damage that we might be about to inflict. So that's the deck. It's slightly esoteric, I'm aware, but it has a lot of answers to a lot of things. So let's jump into a battle and providing my throat holds up, Let's see how it goes. Okay, first fight against a San Sao, I think. PvP first, Dan. 
using uh, Elysis, I think it is. Uh, I always forget her name. I don't know why this should be interesting. Okay, so let's see. So we're starting. So it's not ideal, but we'll play the Book of Knowledge. Our opponent's using no mutants, gold, mana, and dark resource. Interesting. Interesting. Wow, just opening straight up with the Nirvana. Okay, fair enough. Well, we don't really have any uh, removal spells, unfortunately, to deal with that. So we'll uh, drop the Hidden Spider into the grave, and we'll just take the two damage that comes off Nirvana. It's not crucial. She charges up, which is fine. She's just happy to get the damage off, I'm sure. We'll level up. I assume she'll follow suit. Yep, there she goes. All right, our resources are pretty much even, though she's got a good HP lead, but... No problem. We'll drop the number 13. That'll drop the uh, sword in front of Nirvana, <clears throat> which she can't kill with anything other than a spell. And if she uses a spell, we've got a hidden spider. Okay, so the spell comes out. That would like to be a hidden spider. Hopefully he won't go in the middle, but he did. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I would have preferred him to be moved out of the way, and then we could have gotten a, a flying sword out onto the field as well, but at least it blocks the damage, right? A Tsubaki on our opponent's side. <laughs> Looks like she's uh, running a very similar deck to us. So we can't let the Tsubaki charge up. We'll just remove it with a hunt. Well, we'll weaken it with a hunt. We'll remove it with, uh, with number 13. Okay. She goes off. Her ability will activate, but won't cause any serious damage. <clears throat> Now next turn, the Nirvana dies to the Hidden Spider, unless her opponent removes it. Rachel Alucard, okay. Oh, someone on the far left. That's not a good place to put her, unfortunately, for our opponent, because what that means is we can remove that entire trio with a flame emission. And that's going to work out really well for us. The uh, Nago's ability is not going to activate because Rachel is not on the field when it dies. The Nirvana's ability goes off, but doesn't kill our Hidden Spider, and we can level up to three. Getting... A nice amount of damage off. And now we're leading in terms of uh, HP. So, good round for us. <clears throat> Goblin Bomb Squad comes out in front of number 13. No problem. Uh, I think what we'll do here is we'll charge up a couple of times. And probably drop Nirvana, I think, would be best. So, we'll put her over here. The Hidden Spider... Gets a shot off. Golden Bomb Squad is weakened. If Nirvana is not killed, then her ability will kill the Goblin Bomb Squad. Uh, and that may or may not leave our number 13 alive, depending on how much defense the Bomb Squad takes off us. So she summons her own uh, number 13, which brings out a flying sword. Nirvana's ability activates. Boom, 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 boom. And good. Our number 13 survived with uh, 2 HP and, a, and, and 1 defense. So we'll just charge up because we're actually doing fine. Nirvana's not under any real threat from number 13. And that flying sword's going to be killed by our hidden spider. No point in playing cards right now. We don't need to, and it's more important that we conserve as much resources as possible because we are gaining <clears throat> a pretty good lead on our opponent. Okay, they charge into gold. And they're thinking about it. They may have a removal spell, but it may not be worth her time doing it. Okay, so another charge. That one goes into mana, so she's evening out her resources, which is uh, good for her. And another charge into dark. Okay. So out comes the flying sword, but <clears throat> again, the same old thing's going to happen. Nirvana's ability activates, takes flying sword down within removal range. Uh, we've got a decent amount of damage on the board, 14. Now, we could drop Tsubaki here, but there's not really much point. We are winning in terms of sort of dominating the field. So let's just continue to gain a resource advantage. In that way, whatever she plays, hopefully we have an answer to it and can finish her off this turn. So she can't remove Nirvana without killing number 13. She goes for Mukro. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So she uh, she freezes us. Unfortunate, but so it goes. G11 comes out just to block. Okay. No Rachel on the field, so it is a pure block. 
Flying Sword comes out. Unfortunately for our opponent, because they now have a lot of creatures in the field, in the graveyard, all we need to do is Ice Spear. That'll put another three creatures into, the, well, another two creatures rather, into the grave. We charge up. We revive our ability, hero ability, who can force her to uh, bring her creatures out, damaging her. And we can land the finishing blow with number 13. Hey. And that was the Blaze Blue deck. As you can see, surprisingly powerful, surprisingly fun. So if you'd like to copy this deck directly into your game, there's a share code up in the top right hand corner, as always. So that's it from me, and that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and a special thank you to all the Arcanauts who have subscribed so far. Until next time, have fun, and good luck.